there's two impacts that it's it's uh, having or one or there's two that are serious the one that's mainly in the future but not far in the future is the fact that after another one or two degrees of warming the major food uh, crops uh, the rice maize corn wheat um, they they're productivity goes down the yield goes down so um, once we've gone through the next one and a half to two degrees of warming we'll be finding food crops reducing their yield so that's that's serious and that that's that's happening and co- co- will be coming about but hasn't yet um, but the other one it, which is happening now is a sudden disruption of of food production because of weather extremes and those weather extremes started about 10 or 12 years ago and they're now settled in as being maybe the new climate and they all happen in mid-latitudes where crops are produced and result in in real disruption of production so that's something that's happening now and will continue and probably get worse Um, and it's a product of global warming. Well, I, I did look at that in, in my book, and, and the, it, it seems that it makes water shortages worse, um, but in different ways. Um, for instance, there's areas, the most serious is areas of the world which are dependent on seasonal snow melt, like uh, in Tibetan Plateau and the uh, uh, Bolivia, Bolivian Andes, and and also, like Egypt, as before it had the Aswan Dam, was depended on, on the melt of snow from the Ethiopian mountains to, to determine how much flow you had in the Nile and whether you could grow crops that year. So um, it's where you, you have snow in the mountains which melts in the spring and you need that water for uh, growing the growing season. And that there's a surprising number of places where that's true. And in, e- in every case, the snow is melting earlier or there isn't enough of it anyway. So you're not getting enough water at the vital time for, for your crops. So that's, that's having an, an effect which, which is worldwide. Or not, well, it it's happens in a lot of places in the world. But um, in terms of, of water supply in general, it, it uh, again in general warming is bad because you get more evaporation so that your your rivers and reservoirs tend to to dry up quicker i think what attracted me to real truth about health, health conference was first of all the, the the enthusiasm of steve i mean he he asked me to come in in a well, not in a way where I couldn't refuse, but in a way that, that made me made me really feel inclined to come. And I've been to uh, an increasing number of similar conferences or, or over this last year or two, since my book came out, in fact, and that uh, because I've been asked to, to talk about my book, uh, in some cases it's by the publishers, they sent me to book, festivals where I give a talk and take part in a panel discussion with sim- authors of similar kinds of books. So um, I get to, to be involved with the public a lot in those, in those uh, sort of ways and, and I very much enjoy it because I'm in trying to get across the case for doing something about climate change uh, by talking directly to, to the public they come up with things which scientists wouldn't come up with, but which in fact are are very relevant. And, and when you're thinking about rather than how do we solve a particular problem scientifically, which is what scientists think about, it be we we know the basic framework of the science here. How do we implement this? Or how do we get the world to wake up to it? What can we do? How can we start? the process and, and who can be involved, then that, that all involves the public. Mm-hmm.